Okay, so this is going to be a, just a real quick video on how to apply an image texture to a plane um, as a RenderMan material. Uh, if you remember my uh, Minnesota infographic scene, I've got a billboard in there of um, pointing to Fargo. And the way that I actually textured the billboard was instead of just applying individual textures to faces or just regular colors to faces, I applied an image texture to it. So you can see, obviously in the viewport you don't really see anything, but if I hit render or IPR render, uh, you will see it pop up here in just a second. Hopefully just a second. Let's try that again. There we go. There we go. Okay. So you can see that I've got, I just found like a postcard image from Google and apply it, applied it straight to the, the plane. And it renders fairly fast. Um, it's not, you know, there's no transparency there. I don't even think I have any specularity on there. So it's a, it's a pretty quick render. What's really slowing this down is the fact that I've got mesh lights uh, in the image more than the fact that there's an image texture. So uh, you can see that's, that's the effect. It's a pretty nice, easy effect. So let's go over real quick how to do that. I'm just going to do this in a new scene, keep things clean and simple. Uh, the first thing you need is you need a plane. All right? Uh, and if you know what size your image is, it can be helpful to make sure that it's the same size as your plane so that you don't have any distortion. There are ways that you can fix that distortion, but um, all else being equal, it's easy to start with the right dimensions. So uh, I'm going to start with... Uh, I'm going to go into the top view, and I'm going to add an image plane uh, to my scene as a reference. Right, it's this button up here that we did way back when, um, when we just added the Minnesota map as a as a reference. So I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to load my greetings from Fargo uh, image. Open that up. All right, and then I'm going to go to my uh, plane. And I can either scale up my image texture or I can or scale up my plane or scale down my image texture. I think I'll scale down the image texture. It's rather large. Uh, so I'm just going to set all of these to like 0.2. Oops. That's better. And I'll also set my alpha gain down a little bit too so I can see. Well, let's go to like 0.5. Okay, now I can grab my plane and I will scale that up accordingly. Scale it up there, scale it a little bit wider. All right, so it looks like it's pretty close to that right size. Uh, now that I've got it sized right, I'm going to grab in my outline. I'm just going to delete that image plane. I don't need it anymore. It was just there as a reference for the size. So now I'm ready to apply the texture. And I will start my RenderMan presets browser and just grab any old texture, import and assign to selected. All right, remember that's right mouse click, uh, hold the right mouse button down, import and assign to selected. So I've got that. Uh, I'm also, while I'm here, going to add just a regular outdoor environment and map to my scene. Okay. So now I've got my plane and I've got this big. Uh, large sphere in the way, so I'm going to, just to get it out of the way, give it its own layer and turn off the layer. All right, so I've given that a material. I'm going to open up my Hypershade Editor right here. I'm going to select that material. I'm going to name it. We'll call it Fargo Sign. And then to apply a texture uh, to the image, in the diffuse section, we have this color picker, right? And we're all familiar with adjusting the color. But instead of choosing the color, if you click on this little checkerboard pattern to the right of it, that's where you can go to uh, apply a texture. And you can see that a bunch of options have uh, the possibility to apply textures. You can use textures for a number of things. You can use them for bump maps or displacement maps. You can use them for masking. Um, you can use them just to define where their specularity is. You know, if you only want part of your surface to be shiny, you can use a texture to define what, what is and is not shiny. 
Uh, but for now, I'm going to keep it real simple and just go with color and click on the checkerboard pattern. Then uh, this create render, render node window will pop up. And we can see we've got this file option right here. All right, and this is actually in the Maya 2D textures section file. And click on that. And this is what pops up. And if actually, if we right click on Fargo sign and go to graph network, we can see what our node tree is now looking like for this shader. We've got our shader, we've got the actual material here, and then we've got a file node and we have a place 2D texture node. So the file node, if we click on that, is where we can load in our uh, texture. So I'm going to select my gradients from Fargo. And again, all my textures are saved in my source images folder in my project, so they all stay together. Uh, click Open, and you can see the shader ball uh, updates. And I can go into uh, IPR render, and that'll pop up here in a second. And there we go. Now, this worked great, you know, because I sized it to the image, it's already mapped perfectly. But that may not always be the case. Uh, and so there's a couple of things that you can do to make adjustments. I'm going to keep the IPR open here. But in my Hypershade, if we click on this Place 2D Texture node, and again, to get to that, you right click on your shader, graph the network, and click on Place 2D Texture. Uh, I can I can translate the frame, I can rotate the frame, so if I ro rotate this you can see that postcard is rotating. I'll zoom in here so you can see that a little bit better. Alright, so I can rotate that. Um, I can repeat it. So if I increase this, these repeat UV numbers, let's say I set that to 5 and 5. Okay, now I've got a bunch of different copies of it because I'm not, I'm not scaling it up, I'm scaling it down. I'm telling it I want this to repeat five times. Uh, you can think of this as uh, UV as being like an X and Y. It's, a, it's just a texture coordinate. So the first box is your U value. It's the, think of it as horizontal or the width. And then the second box is the V coordinate or the vertical. Uh, uh, yeah, coordinate. So you can set that to five and then it'll repeat a bunch or if you want it to be larger and zoom in on it You can go to like 0.8 Oops, set this to 0.8 Okay, now you can see that it's it's going off the edges so you can use those to adjust Your size as well. You can also translate the frame. So if I set this to like one oh, We're not really gonna see anything. Let's go to like 0.5. There we go. So 0.5 now puts the seam right in the center. If you need to shift things around a little bit, um, you do have that freedom. Now, if for some reason, well, this is just with a plane, but there's other ways that you can do this. So if I've got, um, let's say I've got a cube, and I want that texture to be just on one side of the cube, well, you can apply a texture just to one face. Like you can apply textures by face for for any material. Um, come on. All right, and then with that selected, again we'll grab our new shader. We're going to name it. We'll call it uh, Cube Image, and then it's the same process. You go to Color. That's going to open up your create render node. Choose file, load up your image. Greetings from Fargo. Click open, and then I need to restart my IPR render because I added geometry. And there we go. Now, by default. It's not showing the whole, uh, the whole image. So we need to tell it to figure it out. And the way that you do that, the easiest way, uh, is through a projection. 
And you can think of it as actually a projector shining a light, you know, an image, a, a slide of the texture on the object. And so we need to define really what the bounds are of that image. Also, that should not be wrapping around. I don't know, there's some weird bug in RenderMan uh, this time around where, make the rest of it red, where sometimes you have to wait, uh, assign a different material, and then reassign what you actually want it to be. Let's go back into face. We'll make this the cube image. Okay. So now it should at least be mapped to the correct faces. And it's not. Okay. This is a bug that popped up in RenderMan. It's, it's some something with this combination of Maya 2018 and RenderMan 21. Because uh, this didn't happen in Maya 2017. So I don't know why that's happening. But is we're just trying to remap the image. For in our modeling menu set, we've got this UV menu. And there's different ways that you can pro project something. You can project something as a sphere, as a cylinder, as a plane. Um, you can tell it just to go automatically, whatever it thinks is best, or best plane. We've got a few different options. Um, the two that I'll, I'll use generally for this type of thing are either uh, planar or from camera, so you can actually position the camera into whatever view works best and choose a camera based. Uh, we can also do planar. When you do that, uh, it gives you this little kind of widget thing that pops up that you can then manipulate to place that texture a little bit better. Um, you see this one actually showed up really small there. Let me, if I undo that, select all of it just to show you. Okay, so there you can see it, it popped up um, with some width. So you can see what that normally looks like. So you can select that and you can rotate that. Whoops. Well, not really. Not with the manipulators. Um, undo, undo, undo. Planar. Um, that refers to your place 2D texture node. We can use that and kind of see how that will translate to the image. Okay, so you see that's the wrong, the wrong direction, right? Because it's running this way when it needs to be running that way. So that's when I would come into, for instance, my front view, and maybe do a project a camera base. So it's going to project from the view, and then relaunch my IPR render. on. There we go. And there it is. Now, you can see the, the problem with this being um, not a square image and a square face, right? It is squeezing that in. So sometimes that looks okay. Like in this instance, it looks okay. Um, but it won't, it won't look okay in every instance. Uh, so you do need to be careful about your aspect ratios of all of your uh, textures if you do decide to do that. I'm only really showing the, the planar mapping because it's, it's the easy one to, to get if you need a little accent for a sign or for a flag or anything like that. I don't want to get too much into um, UV unwrapping and getting any more complicated uh, than that. But again, just the basics of it are selecting your face, applying the texture or the, the material, and then in the color, adding an image texture uh, and loading up the, the image. So play around with it. There, there are additional resources online, and I think you've even got some other videos on this channel that may go into that in a little bit more depth with UV unwrapping. But um, for this basics class in this project, I just want to focus on, on just uh, one image on one plane.